morning to my dear students. Welcome to 5th standard first online class. Today in this session, we are going to see the most interested topic is growing plants. The plants are amazing. Are you seeing the plants? Yes. How the new plants are grow? The new plants are grow not only from seeds but also from their roots, stems and leaves. In this lesson, the bean seed is given as an example for growing plants from seed. First, see the structure of a bean seed. This is the structure of a bean seed. The outermost covering of the seed is called a seed coat. The seed coat protects the baby plant inside it. The seed coat has a tiny hole through which the seed gets water. Next, all the seeds do not grow into a new plant. Some seeds are destroyed by wind and rain. Some seeds are eaten up by birds and insects. While some seeds do not get the right condition to germinate. Next, what is germination? What is germination? You are already studied in the lower class. Just remind it. What is germination? Germination means the process by which a seed produces a new plant is called germinate, germination. What are the conditions necessary for the germination? The following are the conditions necessary for germination. Sea needs air, water and sunlight to germinate into seedlings. If a seed does not receive any one of these three, it will not germinate. Next, the stages of germination with the help of a following diagram. First, the healthy seeds are sown in the moist soil. Then the first stage of germination, the seed gets air and water and sunlight. In the second stage of germination, the seed soaks up water, the seed coat breaks, the root emerges out. In the third stage, the new plant develops shoot and root. At the fourth stage, the plant grows in size, it develops leaves. In the fifth stage, the cotyledon shrinks. What is cotyledon? Cotyledon means the part of a seed that store food for the baby plant. These cotyledons shrink and disappear. New plant will grow. Under this heading, structure of a bean seed and germinations are over. Now, I am going to ask one question. What will happen if you sow many seeds too close to one another? What will happen? Listen carefully. After they germinate, they will compete for air, water, light, nutrients and space to grow. As a result, many of them would die. To ensure that the seeds do not grow too close to one another, many plants naturally scatter their seeds by different means. Now, let us learn what is dispersal. What is dispersal? The process by which seeds are scattered away from the parent plant is called dispersal. Some base of Seed dispersals are given below. First one, dispersal by wind. Seeds of certain plants are very light and have wing-like structures or hair on them. These seeds are easily carried away by the wind from one place to another place. Examples, maple and dandelion seeds. Second one, dispersal by water. 
seeds of plants such as lotus and coconut are spongy or have a bifrous covering which helps them to float on water water carries the seeds from one place to another place examples lotus and coconut third one dispersal by animals seeds of some plants such as cockleber have spines or hooks these seeds stick to the bodies of animals and birds and are thus carried away from the parent plant next fourth one dispersal by explosion what is the meaning of the term explosion explosion means burst open the fruits of some plants such as peas and beans burst open when they are ripe scattering the seeds in all directions this method of seed dispersal is called explosion now we are going to learn how new plants grow from roots example carrot in carrot the food is stored in the root a new plant can be grown from the top portion of a carrot in third method how new plants grow from stems example potato and ginger in potato a potato has a bud called eyes a bud can grow into a new plant in ginger ginger will grow a leafy shoot when planted in soil in fourth method how new plants grow from leaves in bryophyllum leaf has many buds on its margin new plants arise from these buds when the buds falls on moist soil now let us learn what is agriculture the practice of growing plants on a large scale for food or other purposes is called agriculture do you understand next what is crops plants that are grown in large quantities in a particular area during a particular season are called crops what are the condition needed for crops crops need air water and nutrients how the plants get nutrients from the soil the plant get nutrients from manure and fertilizer what is the importance of manure and fertilizer the manure and fertilizer improves the fertility of the soil the fertilizer are specific in their action and provide one or more particular nutrient whereas manures generally improves soil fertility by increasing humus content next how crops protect from birds insects rats etc crops need protection from bird insects rats and pests before and after harvesting they are sprayed with pesticides to protect them from pests and other harmful animals farmers also use scarecrows to scare away birds from field where crops are grown it's time to learn the stages of agriculture what are the steps involved in the stages of agriculture there are six steps involved in the stages of agriculture the first stage of the agriculture is the field is ploughed ploughed mean loosen the soil second stage manure or fertilizer are added to the soil what's the purpose of adding manure or fertilizer manure or fertilizer increase the fertility of the soil third stage seeds are sown 
healthy seeds are sown in the moist soil the fourth stage the crops are sprayed with chemicals called pesticides to protect them from pest what is pesticides pesticides is a chemical used to protect the crops from pest the fifth stage of agriculture is the crops are irrigated irrigated means water sixth stage the crops are harvested refer the picture page number 17 in your science book in hilly regions people grow crops by cutting steps into the mountain side this is known as step farming or terrace farming now i am going to ask one question why farmers grow different crops in different seasons because a particular crops may grow well in one season and may not grow that well in another season that's why farmers grow different crops in different season there are two types of crops karif crops and rabi crops what is karif crops karif crops are crops grown from june to october are known as karif crops it depends on monsoon rains example rice and maize next what is rabi crops rabi crops are crops grown from november to april it does not depend on the monsoon rains examples wheat and legumes thank you